In this video, I want to show you how to calculate a company's ROA, which stands for Return on Assets. So ROA is a ratio. It's a financial ratio that measures how profitable a company is given the assets that it has at its disposal. So we would calculate ROA by taking a company's net income, and that would be the bottom line on its income statement, right? So we've got our net income divided by the company's average total assets, okay? So let me give you an example of why ROA is important and I'll show you how to calculate it in the process. So let's say that we have two companies that have the exact same net income. So they're equally profitable and we wanna compare them, see which is a better company and so forth. So let's say we have a company called Flying Cars and a company called Flying Bicycles. And each of them, for the year ended uh, December 31st, 2019, they have net income of a million dollars. So again, this is exact same profit. Both companies made a million dollars of net income. So you might think, hey, they both did a great job. They both had a million dollar profit. These companies seem pretty comparable. But we can think about, well, okay, that was their net income, but how many assets did they have at their disposal? If one company had a lot more resources than the other and they ended up with the same profit, uh, that's going to map into a change or difference in the ROA. So what we need to do is we need the average total assets. So we're going to take the app, the total assets. If you were to look at the balance sheet as of December 31st, 2019. So let's say, for example, for flying cars, that was $8 million of total assets. But then you look at the prior year's balance sheet as of December 31st, 2018. And let's say that was $12 million. You add that, so you add 8 million plus 12 million and divide it by two. Okay, and that's gonna give you 10 million as the average total assets for flying cars. Here's why we're taking the average total assets and not just the most recent total assets. The reason is, is that this net income was earned over a period, right? So this net income isn't as of a point in time, it's for a period, it's for an entire year. So for the prior year, Flying cars made a profit of $1 million. But the total assets, if we just take as of December 31st, 2019, that's as of a point in time. That's just as of December 31st, 2019. So what we're going to do is take the both of them from the prior year and this year's total assets and divide them by two. So that's what we do, do divide this by two to say, okay, over the period, over this prior year, roughly what was the total assets at any given point in time. That's why we take the average total assets. So now, and we do the same thing for flying bicycles. They had two and a half million total assets at uh, the, the most recent uh, balance sheet date, and then four million the year before. We add four million plus two and a half million divided by two, that gives us 3.25 million, okay? Now, we have, the net, we have the net income and we have the average total assets, so we can go ahead and we can calculate the ROA. We can calculate the return on the assets. Now we see that for flying cars, the ROA is 10%. Okay, so basically if you took 1 million and divided it by 10 million, you'd get 0 0.1, okay, you'd get 0 0.1, which is, is equivalent to 10%. Okay, so if we convert that to a percentage. So the ROA, the return on assets for flying cars is 10%. Now for flying bicycles, we see that the ROA is 30.77%. We got that by taking the 1 million net income, dividing it by the average total assets of 3.25 million. Okay, that's just our equation right here. And then that, and then we convert the, uh, the proportion to a percentage. So 30.77, look at this is triple what the other companies are away is. So why is this happening? Well, if you think about it, each company has the same net income. So they have the same numerator up here for calculating the ROA. But one of the companies, the Flying Cars, has a lot, lot more total assets than the other company. Flying Cars has $10 million in average total assets, whereas Flying Bicycles had $3,250,000 as average total assets. So basically, Flying Cars had triple, they had more than triple the amount of assets to work with, and yet they ended up with the same net income. Okay, so it makes sense that we look at flying bicycles and say, okay, their return on assets is better, a lot better. It shows that they're making more efficient use 
of the assets that they have, right? Think about it. If you had two people that were entrepreneurs and both of them came back and said, hey, I made $100,000 in my first year of operations. Well, if one of them only started out with $10,000 and ended up making a $100,000 profit, you'd be pretty impressed. But if the other person started out with $50 million and came back with that same profit of $100,000, you wouldn't be that impressed. Because you say, hey, the one person started with ten grand, the other one started with $50 million. Okay, so that's that, That's the entire concept behind what we're trying to figure out with ROA is we're just taking the net income and saying, okay, let's scale the net income by the average total assets to see how profitable this company was given the amount of resources, the amount of assets that the company had access to over the time period. Now, when we're comparing companies, so we can look at the same company's ROA over time. So we can look at Flying Bicycle's ROA over time. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Here, we're comparing it to the ROA of a competitor. But if we want to say, okay, why specifically is you know Flying Bicycle's, why is their ROA so much better? And so if we want to dig deeper, we can actually break the ROA into two separate components. And this is called ROA decomposition. ROA is actually equal to a company's profit margin times its asset turnover. And we'll talk about how to calculate those ratios and do this decomposition in the videos to come.